Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Yevamot, we are up to Perek Dalet Mishnah Aleph, today's Mishnah should be Leilun Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aranbay, Veliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelo, Ben Chana Bad Meriam, Minuchatam Began Eden, Amen, and Leavdi Ben Chaim Lachaim, the Refua Shenema, the Anea Sheno Ben Roza, Betor Shea Chulei Yisrael. If a man dies with children, his widow is free to marry others without Yibum or Chalitza. If she became pregnant from him before he died and gave birth after he died, she also does not require Yibum or Chalitza provided the child is viable, meaning expected to live. By biblical law, even a child that dies shortly after being born exempts its mother from Yibum or Chalitza. The rabbis, however, required that we must know that the child was viable. We know this to be true when the child is born after a full nine months of pregnancy or when it lives for at least 30 days. If a child is born after a shorter pregnancy and it lives for fewer than 30 days, we cannot be sure that it was viable and the widow must therefore perform Chalitza. This is discussed by Shulchan Uchen Ramah in Ezel chapter 156, Halakha 4. Therefore, if a man dies, his brother is supposed to wait three months before performing Yibur Machalitza with the widow so that we can tell whether she is pregnant or not. Our Mishnah discusses the law where Yavam performed Chalitza within those three months and it turned out that the Yavama was pregnant and she later gave birth. If someone performed Chalitza with his Yavama, and she was later found to be pregnant from her deceased husband, Vialdan, she gave birth, the law is as follows. Bizman Shavlad Shel Kayama, when the child is viable, the Chalitza is meaningless since she did not need since she did not need it. Therefore, who mutar bikovotea, the Avam is permitted to marry her close relatives, Vimutera Bikovav, and she is permitted to his close relatives. Because biblical law forbids a man to marry certain relatives of his wife even after he divorces her, and similarly forbids her from marrying certain of his certain certain of his relatives. And the rabbis extended these prohibitions to a couple that perform Chalitza because Chalitza resembles divorce in the minds of people. But in this case, when she gave birth and the child is viable, he is permitted to marry her close relatives and she is permitted to his close relatives. Velo pisalam in a keunan, he has not disqualified her from marrying into the keunan, meaning from marrying a kohen. A woman who performed chalitza similar to a divorce scene not, may not marry a kohen. Here, however, the chalitza was meaningless, so she is permitted to a kohen. And of that Shen Kayama, however, if the child is not viable, meaning she had a miscarriage or a child was born prematurely and died shortly after being born, then the chalitza was necessary. Therefore, who has to He is forbidden to her close relatives. And she is forbidden to his close relatives. And he has disqualified her from marrying into the keuna. Now, this Mishnah was explained. And the next Mishnah will be explained according to one opinion in the Gemara, Rabbi Yochanan. The Gemara also gives a very different explanation in the name of Reish Lakish. This is the Gemara's explanation on page 34b. Again, this Mishnah and the next Mishnah follow the explanation of Rabbi Yochanan. We can, that is the end of Mishnah Aleph. We continue now with Mishnah Bet, which discusses the laws of Yibum with the pregnant Yivamah. Koneset Yivimto, if someone married his Yivamah within three months of her husband's death, the name Tzedme Ubered, and she was later found to be pregnant from the first husband, the Aldan, she gave birth, Bizman Shavlad Shel Kayama, when the child is viable, Yotzi, the Yavam must send her away. The Yavama, he has to divorce her, he may not stay married to her. Since she is an Ervatim, since his brother ended up having a child, there was no mitzvah of Yibum, and she is forbidden to him as an Erva, his brother's wife. And for this reason, she does not even need a get, since marriage with an Erva does not take effect. Vechayvin bekorban, and they are subject to a chatat offering since their yibum was an unintentional sin. A person brings a chatat offering to atone for unintentionally violating a prohibition that carries a penalty of karet for someone who would violate it deliberately. Sleeping with an erva is such a sin. Since they did not intend to violate this prohibition, rather they thought they were doing a mitzvah of yibum, they must each bring this offering to atone. And if the child is not viable, meaning it is clear the child was not viable, for example, it was stillborn or showed other signs of not being able to survive, he may keep the Yivama as his wife since she indeed required Yibum since his brother died without children. The Mishnah now addresses a case where the Yivama gave birth to a viable child, but we do not know whether it was from the first husband or from the Yivam. If it is not known whether the child was born of a nine-month pregnancy from the first husband, in which case the first husband had a child and Yibum was forbidden, or whether he was born of a seven-month pregnancy from the second husband, in which case the first husband did not have a child and Yibum was permitted, for example, he performed Yibum two months after his brother died and she gave birth seven months later. The Mishnah says, Yotzi, the Nevam must send her away. He must divorce the Yavama since she might be forbidden to him. However, she needs a get since if it is not the child of the first husband, Yibum was actually required and she became his wife. 
Vavlad Kasher and the child is of acceptable lineage. He is not a mamzer, since either way he was not born from a sinful relationship. He is either the child of the first husband, whose marriage was permitted, or from the Avam, in which case the first husband died childless, and so the Ibum was permitted. Vechayvin ba'asham talui, and the couple is subject to an asham talui, which is brought by someone who is unsure whether he must bring a sin offering, since they might have sinned. Now a person brings a khatat offering only when he is sure that he violated the type of prohibition that we mentioned earlier, that if you do it on purpose, it would be punishable by karet. If he did something that might have been a violation of this type of prohibition, he brings an Asham Talu. An example is our case, where the couple might have been guilty of violating the prohibition of marrying an erva if the child was from the first husband, but they are not sure since he might be the child of the Yavam. And that is an Abotayv, that is Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.